So in this video, I want to begin by creating our new Next.js application. So I've opened up my terminal and then I'm going to cd into my desktop and then into a folder on my desktop that is called YT videos. And then inside here, I'm going to say npx create dash next dash app at latest. I know, let me not use latest. I think let's just use create near next app. And then my application is going to be called event dash booking dash creation. Creation. And then I want to install Tailwind CSS. So I'm going to add the Tailwind flag. So dash dash Tailwind as well as ESLint. So dash dash ESLint. And then let's say enter. And then let's answer a few questions before we can proceed. So we are not using TypeScript. We are not using the source directory. We want to use the app router and the default alias. We want to say no. So let this finish canvassing and then we're going to continue. So our application is finished. So what I'm going to do is I want to open up VS code into this folder. So I'm going to say code event dash booking dash creation. And here is our application. So let me just go ahead and say control J to open up our integrated terminal. And then inside my terminal, I'm going to say npm run dev which is going to spin up our development server on localhost 3000. And as that opens up, we know that in our application, we are going to have a route to create new events, as well as another one to see our booked events, and then obviously for the homepage. So the way we're going to structure it is as follows. Inside our app folder, the page JS that is inside here is going to be our homepage. And so before I edit anything inside here, I just want to open up my browser so that we can go ahead and see the default application. And so there is our default application. Now we are going to use the default styling in the globals.css, which is our CSS files right here. So I'm not going to change anything inside here because I want the dark background. And then it is also going to change depending on whether you have light mode or dark mode because of this right here. And so what I want to do first is I want to go ahead and set up the routing for our application. So we know that we have a page to create a new event and a page to create the booked events. So inside our app folder, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it new dash event. So that the route that shows up in our browser is forward slash new event. And then inside this folder, I'm going to create a new file called page.js. Now inside page.js, I just want to render some default text. So I'm going to say RFC. And this is coming from an extension that I have. And this one, I'm just going to say new event. And the extension that I was mentioning is called, uh, where is my extension tab? Uh, what are these tabs? Huh. Okay. So the extension is called uh, React Redux. And I can't find it right here. So it's called ES7 Plus React Redux and React Native Snippets. So you can go through it. And it allows you to do things like RFC to generate some boilerplate code so that you don't have to keep on typing the same thing every single time. So let's paste this out and then save that. And then back inside our Explorer, I'm going to go ahead back inside our app and I'm going to create a new folder. And this is going to be called booked-events. And then inside here, I'm going to create a new file called page.js. And then I'm going to say RFC once again and then change this to booked events and then save that and then space this out just a bit. Now, what you'll notice with this done is that I can now navigate into my application. And if I go into forward slash new event, then we see some text that says new event. And if I go into, oops, if I go into forward slash booked events, then I, I should see booked events. Now, what should be common with all these pages is I don't want to manually navigate using the address bar. So let's go ahead and create our header. And to do that, I'm going to navigate outside of the app folder and right inside the root, I'm just going to create a new folder here called components. And then inside components, I'm going to create a new file called header.js. So header, spell it properly, .js. And then I'm going to say RFC, like so, and then change this to capital. And then I'm going to save that. And what is going to be unique about the header is that it's going to be visible on all pages that we have. So in order to do that, when you're using Next.js is you have to navigate into your app folder and then inside the layout. And then inside the layout, you just go ahead and import your header where you want it to be. So in this case, I want it to appear first 
so on top and then the rest of the components are going to appear on the bottom and so the way we do that is that we just render our header above our children now of course if i were to render it below the children then the header would come below the children but then just run it on top of the children and then make sure that you import it as well so save that and then you should see header right there and then now even if i go into forward slash new event i still see header and then i see new event so let's go ahead and create our header and inside this component this is what we're going to do because we already have tailwind css installed so i'm going to return a fragment and then i'm going to return a header with a class of flex and item the center and justify dash between with padding all round of six and let's see and uh, let's say flex dash wrap with a gap of four and then inside here i want to render a div and then this div is going to be just some text that says event booking and creation and then save that and just to explain this tells a bit so this changes it into a flex box so that they are aligned in uh, row form and then item center just makes sure that it is centered properly all the elements inside here should be centered uh, depending on like the largest element let me use that and then justify between makes sure that they take up the entire space of the device and then padding six is just to increase the padding all around so this spaces and this space on top and on the bottom and then flex wrap ensures that if you have multiple items and they reach the end then they automatically go into the next line and then a gap of four makes sure that there is always a space in between the elements of four which in this case is about 24 pixels if i'm not wrong and it is 16 pixels not 24 pixels so let me go ahead and do this so we know this is our our left side so in the center i'm going to have a navbar so navbar with ul with three list items and then these are going to be links and uh, i'm doing that wrong so you uh sorry navbar ul into li times three so three list items and these are going to be links and then let's just make sure that we import this from next link and then this is going to have an href that goes back into forward slash with text that says home and then this one is going to be an href going into forward slash booked events and the text is going to say booked events and then this third one is going to be an href that goes into new event and then the text is going to say new event and then finally below this snap bar we're going to have a div that says welcome so welcome save that and this is what we should have on the screen once it reloads so there we go so we have the text here and have this and then we have this so let's begin to style it out so for this div i'm going to give it a class name of font dash bold and i think that's going to be it really because there is nothing much that we're doing there and the same for this one so give it a class name of font dash bold and then on the ul I want it to be a flex box by default so i'm going to give it a class of flex and then items dash center and justify dash center with a gap dash four to separate out the items just a bit there we go and then let's see once we do that we can also go ahead and say flex wrap but that that really isn't going to do much if you go ahead and try to shrink this down look at how it's going to look on mobile screens so what you can do really on mobile screens is the following you can just go ahead and say make it hidden and then on medium screens we can make it to be a block element so that it's going to be hidden by default on mobile and then we can do the same for the welcome right here we can set it to hidden and then on medium screens we can set it to a block element so that it is now hidden here so that on mobile we have this nice looking navbar and then now we can begin to create our new event page and then something else that i do want to do is that i want to add some bit of like um what's it called i want to add a bit of opacity on the links that are not active and then on the links that are active then i want to be i want them to be completely opaque just so that it gives like a hierarchy it shows you like a notification kind of you know that you are currently on this page so the way we do that is we're going to use a hook that is called use params and because this is next next js which uses server components by default and we want to use a hook then we need to transform this into a client component first of all by using the use client directive and then we can go ahead and say import use params and sorry it's not use params it's use path name use path name from next navigation 
and then inside here we can create a variable here called path name and set it to use path name like so and then what we can do is we can go ahead and add some custom classes here and then i'm going to give it a class name here and i'm going to say uh, this is going to be dynamic so curly brackets and then back ticks and then dollar sign and then curly brackets once again and then we're going to say that when use path name when use path name is equal to the url which we don't currently have so we are going to use we're going to need to do some bit of uh, refactoring right here i know this is not use path name this is path name which is the variable that i've just created path name so when this is true then we want to go ahead and say something like font dash bold and opacity dash 100 and then when it is false then we want to go ahead and say font dash oops, font dash normal and opacity dash let's say like 50 and then by default let it have a transition on everything so transition so we need to go ahead and refactor this a bit so that we, are, we can actually use the url here so that this looks nice so what we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and create an array of objects so i'm going to say const links is equal to an array of objects and the title for the first one is the home page and then the url is the forward slash and let me just copy this down twice because it's faster so copy one two the second one is booked events and the url is forward slash booked dash events and then the third one is new event and then the url is forward slash new dash event and then now we can go ahead and render out our array of objects on the screen so let me just comment this out because we're going to use these tiles as well as these ones so inside our navbar i just want to go ahead and say links dot map and then for every link that we're going to have then i'm going to go ahead and render out a link component and you know what we need the list item first so the list item and the list item is going to have a key of link dash url because we know that the url in our array of objects is unique to all of them even the title is unique really and so link that uh, link dot url and then we're going to render out the link component and the href for this is going to go into link dot url and then the text is going to say link dot title and then now let's go ahead and copy these class names so copy oh sorry i commented out the ul i did not intend to do that but let's just copy that and you know what let's first render out the ul here so cut this out and then render a ul like so and then now let's copy out the class names so copy and then paste it here and then we need this class name so from here all the way up to here copy that and then set it on the href right there so let's save that and then let's see what we have on the screen so this should now refactor a bit so it says url is not defined it should be link dot url link dot url because we are now using dot notation so save it and then now that should be fine so we, we are on this page so see how this is highlighted and then this is just a bit uh, slightly less opaque but we, when we click on it to navigate it is now highlighted so that's what i wanted to do for that and what this an opacity of 50 is a bit too small let's use 75 75 i think is much better yeah let's do that so that is our header and in the next video we're going to begin to create the new event page